It's that time to finally lose that weight, shed the fat, and eat some delicious bland chicken, broccoli, and kale for the next six months. In this video, we're going to talk about the curious case of cutting and when and how to do it. Hello, my name is PictureFit, and I make health and fitness videos to help you with your gluteus gains. And one thing I learned through all my years of making videos is that sometimes it's good to revisit previous topics to provide new information, added clarity, and most importantly, use the latest lingo of the current generation so I can stay relevant. That said, no cap, let's jelly spread and toast some yams. Bet. Cutting, in its simplest terms, is a nutrition strategy specifically designed for losing weight. In fitness, cutting is often paired in a repeating fashion with bulking, the strategy of gaining weight in order to build muscle and shed fat over time. Shedding fat is primarily if not completely achieved during cutting phases. Building muscle is primarily achieved with the bulking, although muscle growth is still possible during a cut. But outside of this cut bulk strategy, cutting and losing weight in general is probably more commonly recognized as the most pursued fitness goal. Now, when people think about losing weight, they usually think about the countless diets out there like keto, fasting, macros, full vegan, all meat, toasted yams, and so on. As complex and fancy some of these diets might sound, all weight loss diets essentially operate through the primary objective of cutting. And that boils down to the annoying word we all know and love called calories. Research has consistently shown that losing weight comes down to expending or burning more calories than you consume over a period of time. This creates an energy deficit where your body will metabolize your energy reserves like body fat to sustain function. Ideally, the goal is to tap specifically into your fat reserves so you can shed more and more fat. Ideally, more on that later. So with cutting, the big picture is managing calories. But of course, there's a lot of other details to consider, one of which is knowing when to actually cut. Before thinking about when, you first got to ask yourself, is cutting what you really want to do? One of the biggest things I've noticed in my years in the fitness industry is that people often think their weight and fat are their biggest problems. This thinking often coincides with the common misconception that losing weight will make you look more toned, defined, or more fit. Although shedding fat is part of producing a more toned, whatever that means, or defined muscle aesthetic, it wouldn't work very well if you don't have the actual muscle. Worse yet, as mentioned earlier, although ideally we want to lose specifically fat during a cut, if a cut is done carelessly, you can also risk losing a good amount of muscle. If you currently weigh about average for your height and sex, chances are that cutting is not the best option, especially if you're a beginner. Instead, a slight bulk or something known as body recomp are likely better options. Both can help you build muscle and achieve the defined aesthetic you're looking for and maybe even do so without ever losing a single pound. I'll have links to videos about both in the description, so please check those videos out if you think they're better suited for you. Another case against cutting is for younger folks, especially the ones that are smack dab in the middle of puberty. I am of the opinion that, barring any health-related concerns, one should not attempt to cut at this very important stretch of their lives. Instead, it's better to take proper advantage of this small window, and believe me, it's a small window, of your naturally elevated growth hormones by consistently exercising and getting enough nutrients. Save the cut for when you're older. Moving on, if you are certain about cutting, then let's quickly talk about the most opportunistic times to do it. When to cut will first largely depend on your end goal, but the decision can be supported using certain measurements. In my opinion, the standard measurement for this is your body fat percentage. If you have a high body fat percentage, like higher than 22 and 28% body fat for males and females respectively, then cutting can be a good option. Now this isn't a hard cap, you can definitely start at lower body fat percentages. Just know that the less body fat you have, the higher the risk you will be for losing lean mass, like muscle. Additionally, a very, very low body fat percentage, like below 10% for males and 12% for females, can be extremely difficult to sustain in a reasonable and healthy manner. I recommend stopping your cuts a few percentages shy of these numbers unless there is a specific reason you need to be lower, like for a sport or competition. But frankly, if that was the case, you should already know what you're doing and not watching this video. 
You can also cut your cut earlier if, again, your end goal does not require very low body fat like weight-specific goals, or if you prefer an aesthetic with slightly higher body fat. If you don't have the tools to measure body fat, a slightly decent alternative would be body mass index, or BMI. It's not perfect by any means, but it does account for both your height and weight. Using the listed BMI categories, a good time to cut is if you're above or at the upper end of the normal range. You can also just rely on the weight scale if you're simply trying to reach a certain weight, but do keep your goals realistic. I would caution against using the mirror as a measurement tool. Remember, the lack of muscle definition might be a muscle issue more than a fat issue, which for beginners is not always clear when looking at the mirror. Skip the mirror and spend more time attuning to the other aforementioned measurements. Finally, if you are ready to start your cut, let's get right into how you can achieve it. First, I want to quickly address exercise. Although nutrition is the primary focus of cutting, exercise is extremely important, especially in fending off muscle loss or even stimulating growth. The exercise strategy during a cut is not much different from exercising at any other point. To quickly echo what we know in the current science, you want to train about three to five times a week, target each muscle group two times a week, aim for roughly two to four sets of six to 12 reps for each exercise, prioritize compound exercises, take each set close to failure with occasionally reaching failure, and try to progress your numbers over time. I'll leave a link to a video on exercise progression below if you need more help. And now let us talk about the primary goal of cutting, and that is to be in an energy deficit by again consuming fewer calories than you burn. Fewer calories will vary for each person. To figure it out, we'll start with using a calorie calculator, which also will be linked in the description. Punch in your information into the calculator and you'll get your estimated maintenance calories, or the estimated number of daily calories you need to eat to maintain your current weight. Of course, since we want to lose weight, we want to eat less than this. Now, you can immediately start eating fewer calories than this given estimate, but I highly suggest you further refine this estimated maintenance by first eating at this estimate for two to four weeks. To figure out the calories in your food, you can use one of the many calorie counting apps available. After the four weeks, if you lost or gained considerable weight, like two pounds or more, then you gotta adjust your estimate. What we know is that one pound of weight gain is simplified to roughly 3,500 calories. So for someone that gained two pounds after four weeks, they ate roughly 7,000 calories more than they burned, or about 250 calories more each day. If their initial estimated maintenance was 2,250, then their refined estimate is 2,000 calories. Same applies the other way around. Losing two pounds in four weeks means you ate roughly 250 calories fewer each day. Do the math for your estimates and adjust accordingly. Quick disclaimer, weight fluctuations beyond two pounds is not always attributed to calorie intake, especially for natural weight changing circumstances like the natural cycle of the female sex. If you feel that your weight change was caused by something other than calories, it's probably best to continue eating at the estimated maintenance until you feel more certain. With our newly refined maintenance, let's now cut that number down. There are many ways to determine the number of calories to cut, but to keep things simple, I'll discuss two popular methods. One is just reducing your calories by a fixed amount. I recommend a daily deficit between 250 and 500 calories, which should yield roughly a half to one pound of weight loss per week. This moderate deficit has multiple benefits, like struggling less with hunger, feeling less lethargic, and risking less muscle loss compared to bigger deficits. Cutting 250 to 500 calories a day for most people is a simple no-frills approach. But if you want to consider bigger deficits, which does have its place, then you might want to use the more relative approach developed by the highly regarded fitness expert, Greg Knuckles. Greg's approach allows for a more intuitive and wider deficit range by taking your body fat and body weight into consideration. On his website, Stronger by Science, Greg recommends the simple formula of body fat percentage divided by 20. 
For example, if someone has 20% body fat, dividing that by 20 equals 1. That means the goal is to lose 1% of body weight per week. If that person weighs 200 pounds, that means losing 2 pounds per week, equating to a 1,000 calorie deficit per day. Check out the link in the description to the entire article if you need more details as well as understanding Greg's rationale for his approach. Whichever of the two methods you end up choosing, you will start cutting down your weight and fat as long as you are consistent. Very, very important. Fortunately, the following tips will help you with being consistent and achieve a more effective cut. First tip is to make sure you recalculate your maintenance on a regular basis. As your weight changes, so will your maintenance calories and deficit rates. Recalculating every two months or so will help you with any plateaus you might encounter. The next tip, which is more of a requirement, is to get your protein. High protein intake will be beneficial for muscle growth and preservation as well as managing hunger thanks to protein satiating effects. To keep things simple, try to get around 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day, or about 0.8 grams per pound. More or less is fine, but do try to stay as close to this as possible. Tip 3 is to add cardio wherever possible. In my opinion, it's always better to burn more than to eat less to create a deficit. As you know, cardio can burn a lot of calories, which helps raise your maintenance and can allow you to eat more. This final tip might be surprising for some of you to hear, but it's probably the most important in terms of being consistent. And that is to try out those different types of diets. One of the biggest issues observed in weight loss research is dietary adherence, or the ability to stick with a given diet. No single diet has shown to be superior in adherence than others, and the only thing that improved adherence was preference. Choosing a diet you actually like. To do so, you gotta of course first try them out. By trying different diets, you might find that you love keto and hate intermittent fasting, or you might even love a combination of both. Find out what works for you. I will just caution to avoid any extreme diets, especially ones promoted by influencers that aren't exactly telling the whole story. Just remember that whatever diet plan you end up choosing, your goal will always be to stay on top of that pesky, annoying, and effective energy deficit. Do that and you should be good to go. Just don't forget your protein. And that wraps up cutting. Now, there are many other tips and tricks for cutting and weight loss, like cheat meals, macros, and so on, so I'll leave a few more useful video links in the description below, along with links to everything else we discussed in this video. You can also join our PictureFit community Discord to get help from the wonderful folks there. I wish you all the best in your cutting endeavors. Other than that, if you enjoyed this video and found it useful, please give it a fatty thumbs up and share it with your toned muscle loving friends. Subscribe for more. As always, thank you for watching and don't forget to get your protein.